What do you make of the mandate uh, that by de Blasio that five to 11 year olds get vaccinated? Because I've I've watched your reporting saying, let's be real. The risk to children in contracting covid is low, very low. Yes. So the, the risk of getting a covid illness is very low. Um, um, uh, I find the question of mandating childhood vaccination to be really hard. And I know that 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 you think it's a bad idea. I know there are other people who think it's a good not idea. to vaccinate them, but to mandate it. I think it should be to between a parent it. and uh, the pediatrician. So I just think it's a really hard question. So let's so as you just said, the the risks of getting serious covid for kids is extremely, extremely low. Um, it looks like COVID presents the sort of risk to young kids that the flu does. Um, I think it's actually probably a somewhat lower risk than a typical annual flu, because when you look at the data, the numbers of childhood hospitalizations and deaths are A, tiny, and B, they look similar or maybe slightly lower um, for COVID. And then you remember the fact that actually huge numbers of kids are vaccinated for the flu, right? And so um, if anything, we should kind of expect those to cut the other way. We should expect the flu numbers to be less bad, but they're not. So Mm -hmm. I, the point. first thing I would say is if you have a young kid, I would really encourage you. There are no promises here. There's no 100 percent. There are no guarantees. Are there kids who get COVID and get really, really sick? There are. But it is extremely, extremely rare. The kind of risk that COVID presents to kids is not the kind of risk that we ordinarily organize our daily lives around. We don't we don't shut schools and and reorder our entire lives because of the scale of this risk. To put it another way, if you are going to reorder your entire life um, around the risk that COVID presents to a five or six year old, I would say that means you probably should never put your five or six year old in a car. Right. Um, because it looks like cars present traveling in cars presents substantially more risk of serious illness to children than um, than COVID does. And so yeah. that is why I understand why some people that combined with the fact that we don't have long term data on what the vaccines do to people is why I understand why some people are hesitant to get their kids vaccinated. I right. I mean, that, that's are- why this is a thing. That's why it's a big deal to mandate it. You know, I mean, this is the first city I've seen nationwide why that's mandated that that age group get the vaccine. We saw the L.A. you know, Unified County School District mandate it, but I haven't yet seen a city in America mandate it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. But not only is the risk of getting really ill from covid low to children, but what is the risk of contracting long covid to children? Because that's that's one thing that parents do worry about. Again, I don't yep. think it, they should be mandated to get the vaccine to prevent it. But as I understand it, that, too, is is a relatively low risk. Long covid is a really of all the subjects in covid. There's so much uncertainty about so many different things. And in some ways, this is a silly ranking. There's no need to rank them. But I would rank long covid as the <laughs> one with the most uncertainty. People don't even agree about what long COVID is. And so I, I think we, we don't have rates of what long COVID looks like. Um, all signs are it is extremely low among children, um, um, but, but we just don't really know. And I think one of the things to remember about long COVID is that, and this is really hard for people to, I think, grasp. At at any time, there are a huge percentage of Americans who have unexplained medical symptoms. That's right. Chronic pain. uh, Fibromyalgia. uh, Fibromyalgia. I mean, I don't I don't I would encourage um, all your your listeners and and viewers to read my friend Ross Douthat's book on his struggle with um, with long term Lyme disease. Um, uh, I mean, it's just a huge percentage of, of people out there who have some kind of um, chronic pain or other things. And they are often unexplained. And so so Ross contracted these unexplained symptoms that have subsequently years later been diagnosed as Lyme disease. But imagine that he had gotten these symptoms this year instead of when he got them, which was exactly. 2016, 2015. It would have been absolutely reasonable for him to think that it was a form of long COVID. And so, so what I would say is long COVID is real. The symptoms that people are experiencing, those are really real. But I think what is sometimes happening is 
or I'm confident this is happening, we are misattributing a substantial amount of the of the unexplained symptoms, which again are real, that are always out there to long COVID. And I think that has led to some confusion about how common long COVID is. Now, I do feel compelled to say, we don't know. And to me, the two reasons that it's important to vaccinate kids, we can set aside the mandate question for a second, or we can talk about it, whatever you want. But the reason why I would urge anyone who has young kids to vaccinate them are one, there really is uncertainty about the long-term effects of COVID on your kid. I look at the evidence and I say, there is more uncertainty about the long-term effects of COVID on your kid than there is about the long-term effects of They're all getting COVID. They're all getting COVID. We're all yep. getting COVID, whether we get vaccinated or not. So to prevent your child from having the long-term effects of COVID is a, is fool's gold. I mean, we're all going to get it. Yeah, I think one of the concerns, and this I would put in the big category of we don't yet know, is it is possible that Omicron um, evades the immunity from prior infection better than it evades the immunity from vaccines. We don't know, but that's one of the early studies from South Africa suggests might be the case. If that does prove to be the case, that would be a further argument for everyone getting vaccinated. And then the second one is, look, most young kids have grandparents. Uh, they have older people around them in their lives. I know, and- but that's a personal decision. That's that, that's that's a personal, you know, like that's that's for you to decide whether you want to expose your your their Nana, your mom to that kind of, you know, risk with the child. That's that that's what irritates me is it's like I've seen I've talked before about a mother I know who has a medical note from her doctor saying her kid should not get the vaccine. They have a long history of blood clotting problems in their family. And she presented it to the school and the school said that doesn't qualify. Only if he has a negative reaction to the first shot do we recognize a medical exam. Now that's insane. That is wrong to deprive a mother who's genuinely concerned and so is her doctor about the son's well being enough that they don't want to give this shot to him. You know, it's like she shouldn't be told, well, you got to protect your Nana, you know, like his Nana. Like, and I realize you're not advocating that, but that's what that's what aggravates me about the vaccines. I mean, I read in your this is from October 12th. This is one of your newsletters. You said the risk of long COVID amongst children also appears to be very low. All which raises a thorny question. Should young children be vaccinated? I thought this is very honest of you. You wrote, I, I know some readers will recoil at the mention of that question even, but I think it's a mistake to treat it as unmentionable. There is not the scientific consensus about vaccinating children that there is about adults. And and that's why I think, especially with the young ones, we only have a 10% vaccination rate so far. Only 10% have gotten the first shot. The, you know, people, parents don't want to go first on their littles. And even now, I'm, I was going to mention it with Carol, but I forgot, um, Finland apparently just... Um, they're officially not recommending the vaccine for kids 5 yep. to 11 who don't have risk factors, saying infections in children of this age are usually mild and severe disease is extremely rare. And when the burden of disease is small in one's own group, very few adverse effects are accepted. I mean, I think they mean the adverse effects from the vaccine, you know, the, yeah. that the, those outweigh. Yeah. No, look, I, you know, I, I thank you for quoting from that newsletter. I would I would repeat all that. Um, I do think this is a hard question. Um, uh, I also I look at the evidence and I would say that I think the benefits of vaccinating kids outweigh the downsides. I mean, basically, we kind of don't see any uh, evidence of, of worrisome side effects in, in the vaccines. Yeah. Um, and and this history has repeated itself. Right. You know, there are a whole bunch of people I've gone back and read the cover. It's fascinating. There are a whole bunch of people who said they would not take the polio vaccine. Um, when it came out. If you go back and look at the day one newspaper coverage, uh, there were a group of people in Montgomery County, Maryland, which um, is now, of course, a deep blue part of the country politically, um, uh, but historically is more part of the South, who said, um, we're not going to take the polio vaccine. We're worried about it, what it will do. This isn't a guarantee, but historically, the concerns about vaccine side effects um, have not worn out. <laughs> 